The explosion of people who now feel they have the power to create video movies can be seen everywhere. Low budget films are made on digital video and released directly to DVD. Video blogs, fan films and short films are released straight onto the internet and video content for mobile phones is increasing. As consumers, we are now also content generators. User generated content, well that's something, it's a new kind of term. Actually the term's been around since the 1970s. But um, when people were predicting that the audience would eventually become end users and producers. And this is what's happened. So user generated content is any kind of media content which is made by end users and posted in non-traditional ways. Um, a lot of emerging filmmakers are actually getting attention through um, these other mediums, probably particularly the internet as well. Um, so it um, is a fantastic uh, source, I think, or a fantastic way to uh, identify emerging filmmakers. Uh, the, the, the new technologies are also um, changing the way that you might even have venues. I mean, mobile phones are now being used to make films that are you know, filmed on mobile phones and displayed on mobile phones and a whole range of other technologies. So, you know, we've seen, of course, the, the internet really change the way we do business. And I think that what we're seeing is that technology is not only making it cheaper to, to make films, but it's also means that there's a whole variety of people can have access to the production and creative processes that normally they would not be able to. So I, I believe Boxing Day is the sort of film that embraces the potential of digital technology. It is fairly easy for anyone to make a film on video now and you can you know, edit it on your Final Cut Pro system at home. But it's whether those films are good enough, you know, to actually be released into the market. Now, I know, you know, you can release on the internet through YouTube or, you know, something similar. But again, how do you find your market? Because we had $100,000, we knew that that was what we had to make the film. We just worked backwards and tried to say, how could we shoot this film for $100,000? And we essentially thought the best way of doing it is to approach it like a short film. A short film is usually shot in a week with a few days, of, a few weeks of pre-production, um, and that's how we looked at it. We looked at it as a short film, but the end, the outcome was a feature film. Okay, I guess um, I'll just say a couple of things from my point of view. I mean, rather than this, I think we've got to kind of we've got to. I want to shoot some stuff before Katrina goes. I want to have another go, but um, basically, I hopefully you'll all agree it's a long way from where it was last week. The um, the critical moments for me are your scene, Katrina's scene, the confession at the end, um, and Owen's scenes at the beginning. They're, to me, they're still, I mean, they're a little bit histrionic, you know, at the beginning. And I think that was all, it's only because we've been doing it, it was a bit, bit of a stumble at the beginning of the week. And, but now that we can see the whole thing, you can sort of see where it needs to go. And we, we shot on a, a Panasonic HVX 202EN, I think. And that is capable of shooting DV or mini DV, HDV, as well as shooting onto hard drives. We wanted to try and shoot it on hard drives and then take those hard drives on location and put them into Final Cut Pro ready for editing. So we could see immediately whether scenes were working or not. The film was edited on Final Cut Pro um, and graded on Final Cut Pro, so it wasn't finished on an online on a on a high level online suite, mainly budget reasons. But um, we looked at Mini DV as a possible shooting format, but we felt that it had limitations in terms of it's a home. It's really a home movie or home format and it has that look when you project it on the set on the, on the screen so we considered that that may be not the best for the material that we were dealing with it had to uh, have it had to be a better quality I don't know whether that's the right term for it it had to be a quality that could lend itself to finishing on HDV and lending itself to being blown up to 35mm as you take mini DV to 35mm the limitations of that format are evident People say, oh, but, you know, producing films on the internet, uh, for the internet, producing films on, uh, on uh, mobile phones, isn't that going to destroy cinema? Well, 
the internet didn't destroy television or cinema or newspapers. Um, and what I think will happen is there'll just be different ways of access. Um, participation is quite important, interactivity is quite important and media organisations are starting to see this pressure to include content. That's challenging the role of journalists in many places. Um, people are actually inviting, you know, people in media organisations are inviting user content to be posted to sites regularly. Uh, well, already it's on Adelaide now. We're also hoping to put it on YouTube. Uh, I think the university still has the copyright on the film, though, so we're going to wait a few months and then it'll be up there as well. Now there's a hungry kind of need for content to come. And um, at the moment, people are supplying it, but the media organisations are also trying to find ways of monetising that content back to the users, so putting the pressure back on users.